Hello students, welcome to the solution of the second question of uh, this IOQP uh, paper 2 problem and that is going to be the second uh, version of the solution for the same problem, right? So obviously the first solution gone, uh, you know, disastrously wrong and I am the culprit because I got carried away with the, the question and I thought I solved it all. So that is what happens to the student, uh, to the teachers also, right? So uh, let's correct it and let's uh, uh, let's come to the correct solution uh, as per my you know knowledge this is the cor correct solution and this question here this 12 marker question uh, here if you are watching it the for for the first time uh, it has three lenses l1 l2 and l3 that are arranged in order that means l1 then l2 then l3 and separated by some distances that is given as d12 and d23 there is this uh, very good inequality and for that uh, we have also dis uh, we had also discussed in detail about this uh, about the significance of this inequality right so we are not going to do that in this video here and again uh, we have to determine the value of d12 and d23 if the initial rays which were making very small angle with the principal axis right and they were coming parallelly that means they are coming from the infinite but they were coming making some angle with the principal axis and after being emerging from the lens l3 they are again you know parallel with the uh, parallel and also making the same angle right that they were making initially right so what i overlooked in the in the first solution that i gave was this part only i just overlooked the uh, small angle part and the reason uh, it happened because uh, this question is based on the working of uh, telescope right and telescope and uh, these things uh, are which are actually in, uh, included in the J main syllabus is sometimes uh, my blind spot right so some of these uh, some of these parts are my blind uh, spot so I did not think it uh, in that way right uh, I did not consider that possibility okay now coming to the solution so this is the ray diagram that will happen right so on this lens L1 this beam is making let's say angle alpha obviously this angle alpha is very small but just for the you know sake of the solution we have made uh, we had to make some uh, you know considerable angle right so this is making a very small angle alpha with the principal axis and obviously since this is coming from infinite this will focus on the focal plane that means at a distance f1 from lens l1 so this is where it converts uh, so one ray that is coming from uh, that is actually passing through the optical center goes undeviated and another ray after converging uh, meets this point here at the focal plane right so we are getting a image of height h1 right and from this uh, from this position let's consider one ray that is going through the optical center this is going undeviated and let's consider another ray that is going from here and after being refracted this is meeting here that means the image from the lens l2 is forming here right and the height is h2 height of this image is h2 of course from here uh, final rays has to be parallel to the initial rays making the same angle with the principal axis and since they are parallel that means they are uh, going to infinity and if they are going to infinity that means that uh, the, the object is the actual object is on the focal plane right so they must also be at a distance fc from this lens l3 right so now let's assume uh, this angle was already alpha let's assume that uh, this ray that was passing through the optical center the undeviated ray is making an angle beta with the principal axis so of course here on the other side too it is making angle beta now you just look at uh, this diagram the distance between L1 and L2 was uh, D12. So, of course, this distance is F1. So, this distance will become D12 minus F1. Similarly, this distance is D123. Uh, so, this distance will become D23 minus F3, right? So, just look at the solution. And now, now for this part here, for this part here, for this lens 2 here, what was the meaning of the inequality that we had? This inequality that we had D12 plus D23. 2, 3 and if we just subtract f1 and f3 what we will get here is the distance from here to here right so the distance between the object this is the object for lens l2 and this is the image for lens l2 
the distance between object and image should be greater than 4f otherwise there will be no real image that will be formed right so this is given in the inequality part right now how to solve this question so one equation that we can use is of course the lens equation for the lens l2 we know the value of u that is minus of d12 minus f1 and we know the value of v but uh, we need uh, one more equation because we have two variables and we need at least two equa uh, two equations, right? So the second equation will come from the similar triangles here. Let's uh, see here that there is one triangle, this, this triangle here and this triangle here. These two will be similar triangle because one angle is 90, one is alpha. Uh, similarly, this triangle here and this triangle here will also be similar triangle. Again, this triangle, this angle is 90, this is beta. Similarly here, this is 90, this is beta. So of course, we will use the properties of the similar triangle. The ratio of heights, uh, if we just consider this and this triangle, ratio of heights will be equal to ratio of the basis that is F1 by F3. Similarly, if we just consider this triangle and this triangle, the ratio of the heights H1 by H2 will be equal to this basis here. Again, for the sake of simplicity, uh, so that I don't have to write D12 so many subscript all, all the time, I just uh, took the value of D12 as X and D23 as Y, right? So the next equation that we have is from the lens equation, right? So from the lens equation, 1 by V minus 1 by U equal to 1 by F. This is what we have. And we just have to uh, calculate this part. We'll just multiply. After cross multiplying, uh, we'll get this result. And we'll just substitute the value of y in the lens equation, right? After, you know, solving all of this, we will get the value of x. x was nothing but d12. That we had to determine. So d12 is equal to this much. And we can just put the value of x here and we'll get the value of y, right? Uh, so this will become equal to y. So this is the correct solution. Again, I, I'm sorry to all of the viewers who actually watched the first video. Uh, I am sorry for uh, the loss of time or, you know, incorrect interpretation of the question that I undertook. But again, it happens, right? This is physics. Everybody is bound to make some mistake. Thank you.